Today's video is sponsored by Grammarly. Hi, and welcome back to me talking about whatever I want. Today, I wanted to- Wait, 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 wait. That's the wrong intro. Oh boy. Now, K-pop stands are super fans of various Korean pop groups, or at least that's what most K-pop stands will tell you. But if you ask literally anybody else, then you'll quickly discover basically nobody likes them. They're known for attacking people, hijacking Twitter threads. It's a very different picture than your average K-pop fan would give you. So in this video, I just want to find out which one is it? But first, I want to find out about today's sponsor, Grammarly, a digital writing assistant that helps over 20 million people write clearer. Clearer? More clearly. Less unclear. Grammarly helps 20 million people like me. I know I make it seem like my only job as a YouTuber is to just sit in front of this camera and look pretty, but that's only like 97% of it. Unfortunately, all the rest of it is writing, but that's where Grammarly comes in. The free version of Grammarly checks your basic spelling and grammar. Grammarly Premium, though? Vocabulary suggestions, sentence structure corrections, conciseness, personal fave. Grammarly Premium even has a plagiarism detector, which really would have come in handy when I was in school. Grammarly makes my job so much easier. I used to spend so much time wondering, hmm, does this thing that I wrote make any sense to anyone other than me? The answer, of course, was always no. But unlike other writing correction tools, Grammarly doesn't just stop you from misspelling the word necessary. It helps make your writing as clear as necessary. So go to grammarly.com slash D'Angelo for 20% off of Grammarly Premium today. Sign up for a free account and start by downloading the browser extension. Now let's get back to the video. So in this video, I can't just like declare that all K-pop stands are bad people, but at the same time, I can't just say K-pop stands aren't that bad because so I think the best way to look at it is the good, the bad, and the ugly. But seeing as it's K-pop, uh, literally nobody in that industry looks ugly. It's actually kind of scary. So we'll just look at the good and the bad. So if you ask anybody outside of the stand base what the single most annoying thing about K-pop stands are, I guarantee you they would say it's the self-promotion. For context, K-pop is really obsessed with numbers. And I know being obsessed with charts and data is not specific to K-pop stands. It's just something that K-pop stands have taken to the next level. These people have streaming parties, streaming campaigns, special methods of streaming that vary from platform to platform to to make sure they maximize streams. The K-pop artists themselves play into this by constantly updating their fans on how many streams they're getting. It's to the point where there are giant fan accounts that exist solely to share K-pop streaming numbers, and one of them has almost a million followers. So in order to keep these numbers up, many K-pop stands decide to take the direct approach, which is just spamming all over Twitter for people to stream their favorite artists. But where it gets annoying is when the K-pop stands start trying to promote themselves basically k-pop stands have what are called fan cams which are like concert recordings of their favorite artists and they spam these fan cams everywhere now again not everyone does this but it's frequent enough to where i would be surprised if you managed to go a full day on twitter without running into some random korean pop artist dancing on the timeline another big issue within the k-pop stand community is Anonymity. Now, there's nothing wrong with being anonymous. Everyone on the internet has varying levels of anonymity. Then you have people like your average K-pop stand, and they give us nothing. Now, some people will use their real name or their real picture, but I think the majority of these stands grab a screenshot of their favorite artist and then slap it over our bio with no identifying information. No identifying information that can be used to hold them accountable for the legitimately terrible things that they then proceed to do. Dox people, send death threats, and they do all of this disgusting stuff while having a profile picture of like Jenny from Blackpink. I've seen fan cams and like post announcing celebrities deaths. It's things that you know people would never really do if they weren't able to hide behind anonymity. All right, the last negative thing I wanna look at is the cancel parties. Basically, people choose a new person to cancel on Twitter every single week. And K-pop stands have a lot to do with this. Some of them actually start these hashtags themselves specifically for the purpose of getting a trending tag that they can then attach their fan cams to. But moreover, even when these tags kind of start organically for various reasons, K-pop stands will still proceed to flood these tags that way they can get views off of trending. Besides just being generally annoying, in my opinion, it kind of weakens the purpose of criticism on Twitter in the first place. Because a lot of times, People will start trending for very legitimate reasons, but then a bunch of people will click in, only really see K-pop stuff, and assume it's not that big of a deal. So much of the space where the conversation should be happening is just flooded with like, 
the latest Blackpink music, it's honestly ridiculous. So that's me looking at K-pop stands on Twitter as negatively as possible. But now let's look at the positive aspects and you might actually be surprised. So the first one I wanna bring up is the monetary achievements. By far, these are the most impressive. I'm just gonna use BTS and their fan base army as an example. BTS launched this campaign a couple of years ago with the UNICEF called the uh, Love Yourself campaign. And if you go to their site, you can see that they've raised over $2 million in donations. I don't think the average band could generate $2 million worth of donations by supporting BTS and hosting the streaming parties and all the stuff I was talking about. These stands are actually enabling BTS to be this charitable. Another good example example was BTS teamed up with their label Big Hit Entertainment to donate $1 million to crew members who had been affected by the pandemic that's going around. But most impressive of the monetary achievements by far was BTS's Black Lives Matter donations. And that is because while BTS donated $1 million, which is great, BTS ARMY actually matched that $1 million donation dollar for dollar. I think it's really cool to see a community who can come together, not just to support their favorite artists, but to support causes that matter to make a difference, but um, not just by posting black squares on Twitter, you know, by opening their wallets. All right, so the next positive is strength in numbers. Basically, because there are so many K-pop stands on Twitter, they can come together in strange and magnificent ways. As you know, there's a lot of protests going on and people are being unfairly targeted at these protests by the police. And so the Dallas Police Department thought it would be a great idea to develop this app that lets you report unlawful activity at the protests. And K-pop stands, in an effort to stop the police from unfairly targeting protesters, actually shut this app down. Now you may be wondering, how did this happen? Was it some sort of you know, strategic pre-planned attack. Um, no, they actually just posted a bunch of fan cams. It was so embarrassing for the police department that they had to publicly shut it down. So are you starting to see how like everything I'm saying that was bad about them also winds up being good? K-pop stands are effortless when it comes to shutting down harmful hashtags. Hashtag it's okay to be racist was trending on Twitter, but, and you might see where this is going. If you clicked into that tag, it was nothing but K-pop stands attaching their own fan cams to it with messages of anti-racism. So K-pop stands on Twitter have, in a documented way, shut down corrupt police apps, racist hashtags, this very thoughtful use of the power that comes from having millions of people in one group is something that I think should be pointed out if you want to have a conversation about K-pop stands. They even wound up getting media coverage for this sort of thing when they bought a ton of tickets to a Trump rally and then didn't attend, which some people thought led to a severe over-reporting of numbers for what wound up being a rather disappointing turnout. Whether they had an effect on it or not, that's just hilarious to me. I can just envision the next rally, like seeing that thousands of people signed up, but not knowing how many of them are Gen Z kids just trolling you on TikTok. The last positive I want to mention is the community. For the most part, a lot of K-pop stands are pretty welcoming to people who want to join, you know, people who are new in the group. And if you start actually trying to get a profile of the average K-pop stand, you start realizing that for some people, this is kind of all they have. For a lot of people, this Twitter community that they've built is their main source of social interaction. And so I think creating an environment where people do feel free to talk to each other and talk about things that matter is actually really important. It's something that you don't really see in many other communities, if I had to be honest. All right, so now we come to the verdict. Are K-pop stands good? Are K-pop stands bad? Basically, my conclusion is we need a different term. I think the K-pop stands, like the good ones I mentioned, who try to shut down racism and donate to good causes and support each other and all that stuff, they can keep the label of K-pop stand. But I think the ones who like dox people and try to get people's accounts taken down and send the death threats and all that, they don't deserve to be called K-pop stands. We need a new name for those people, okay? I'm thinking like K-flops? I don't know. But that's just my opinion on K-pop stands. As you can see, I clearly had a lot to say, but I'm interested in what you have to say about that. So, looks like I've gotten to minutes of content now of this. So leave a like to me what you think and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you for watching and a big thank you to my 590,000 subscribers. Okay, bye. That's a deal, right? That's a bet, right?
That's a bet, right? That's a deal, right? That's a deal, right? That's a bet, right? That's a deal, right? That's a deal, right? That's a bet, right? That's a deal, right? That's a deal, right? Ayy, coming down like precipitation. I ain't never met a limitation.